Um, there are two types of volatility, just to confuse us as well, or two ways of looking at volatility. If we look historically, it's just a formula that we can get from Excel. Um, it's, for what it's worth, it's the annualized standard deviation of da log of daily returns. It sounds a bit tedious, but um, it means what, all you do is look at what was yesterday's settlement price, what was the day before settlement price, and you look at the ratio of them, divide the second one into the first one, you then take the log of it, you look at it statistically over a period of time, and you annualize it so you get a figure that's annualized generally. Um, and you just do that over and over again for going back in time. Um, but when people trade options, they're thinking not really about what's happened in the past, they're thinking about what they're concerned is going to happen in the future. So options traders, you can, they very rarely use historical volatility as their starting point. They use their expectation of volatility going forward. What do they think options are worth? Um, and that's called implied volatility. And it, this, is a, this is one of those, I think, conundrums that you look at. You've got, you've got very clear numbers you can calculate in history. You, can, you don't have to annualize it. You, when do you take the standard deviation? Do you take it over 10 days or 20 or 30? And there is no completely right answer. As long as you are consistent, you should get a good picture of, of historical volatility. But then there's this thing that traders make up, not make up, that's not fair, but it's about the market. It's purely about the market. What does the market think options are worth? It's implied volatility going forward. So if, I was, if you asked me to sell you an option now, I can fill in. I know what the price is. I can get it off the ice screen. Let's, we can talk about strike price. Let's, let's say you want to buy a call because you think the Brent market's going to go up next week. So we pick a $70 strike. We know the current interest rate. We can talk about the expiry. Let's make it a one-month option. So all these things are knowns. They're, they're very easy to determine. Uh, the only one that moves rapidly is the price, but we can get the latest price from ICE. To calculate the value of the option that I'm going to charge you using a Black Shells model, the last thing I need is volatility. So what do I use? I could look at the historical volatility of Brent for the last year, and I could use that number. But it, I, it doesn't, it's not necessarily going to do tomorrow what it did for the last year. So what I'd do is look at what, what's the market charging for options. So I'd look at the closest option to the one we're talking about. I could get off the ice screen and I'd work out what volatility was implied by the price that's trading. So if I knew somebody was trading a $65 option with a month's expiry um, for uh, probably about 70 cents, bid, maybe 72 offered, I could put, put that price into the model with all this other information and it would give me a volatility, 45% it would say, bid and 46%. And I could then say, well I'm happy with that, I, that's obviously where the market is, but actually I think I'm going to, I don't think you really understand options, I'm going to use a higher number, um, I'm going to use 48%. And I put all that in and it comes out with a number, which would probably be about 50 cents. We negotiate and we get a deal. And I've used an implied volatility, what the market thinks options are worth. I could reality check it with the historical volatility, but most people don't. They just, they just go with the implied volatility.